conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements Religion and politics, something my uh, great-grandfather who reared me told me a long time ago. Excuse me, I'm trying to prepare for a turn and it's a weird angle. Uh, something that my great-grandfather told me is never, ever argue politics and religion. It ends friendships, cause issues, and it simply isn't worth it. Let a person think and believe how they want to believe. The problem with us as a race is that we've been so heavily conditioned to think one way that anytime someone thinks outside of that, we take it personal. And no matter where you're at, you have to stop and ask yourself, and say to yourself, based on this truth, I'm not the only person in the world. My life and how my life flows is the only, isn't the only thing that uh, impacts how things are and what 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 people think. People aren't viewing life through my lens especially not all the time people may be aware of who I am and what I'm going through and be able to be empathetic meaning to see and feel some of the things I'm dealing with but in truth most people are viewing life through the lens of their own experiences and paradigms and, 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 and cultural nuances and financial situations uh, academic and cultural uh, realities they might not be where I'm at so they may see things differently and they have a right to do that nobody is obligated to take on my religious or political viewpoints now you can have your political uh, viewpoints you can have your religious viewpoints and still be pro-black as long as blackness is the primary element and component that drives your thought processes. And that's where most of us fall off, is that we take how someone else thinks about something and we take it personal. It's as if they did something specific to us. And I'm saying this because I've seen so many different posts on social media. I've heard a few conversations in which people are talking about how they're going to unfriend people, how they are really going to reevaluate their thought processes. First of all, let's, let, let's look at this from a pure perspective. And I'm going to do this as briefly as I can. I'm on the way to pick up my baby from school. She's not really a baby. She's 16. But um, look, from a pure perspective, we're not talking about feelings. That's the biggest problem we have when it comes to religion and politics. Look at politics. We don't vote based on what's on the table. We don't vote vote based on the history of the candidate we don't vote based on the agenda and what's on the table we vote based on two primary elements and components whether they're democrat because 90 percent of our vote since 1960 has gone to 
Democrats, religiously without fail. That's 90% of voters. And we have increased our voter turnout through every presidential election cycle up until the 2016 vote. And now we're back in strong numbers for the 2020 vote. And 90% of our vote has gone religiously to the Democratic Party. And so we do two things. We vote on party lines stronger than any other race, any other group, any other enclave, not LGBTQ even, and uh, not, 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 not any other race, not any other religion. Votes along party lines with the uh, religious loyalty that we do. That's first of all. Second of all, how we feel about a candidate. If, boy, if they can give us some feel good stuff, they can make us like them. It's on. We don't want, we're not worried about that. And then if someone happens to point out some of their fallacies, we take that personally. We don't know these people. These people don't know us personally. They know there's this block of people that vote religiously for one, one, one party and literally, for the most part, hates the other party. And you don't have to really do a lot to get their vote because they're just going to automatically vote. That's why when this big movement to get everybody to vote, when it came down to blacks, nobody was saying vote for blank, 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 blank. They said go vote. Why? Because they know 90 percent of us get to the polls of voting Democrat. One of the best things that I saw done is this time around, they took the straight ticket away. You had to literally go and vote for each particular candidate, which meant it made it a little bit more tedious to do something stupid than normal, but you still could do it. My, 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 my thing is this. My love affair with black people isn't because black people have always done right by me. My love affair with black people isn't because uh, I love where we're at po politically, economically, historically. My love for black people simply I identify as being black. I am unapologetically black. I am black in every way that matters to me. I'm black before I'm a man. I'm a black man. I don't just see myself as a man. I see myself as a black man. That's why I absolutely have to have a black woman. And, and so that's my love affair. So I don't expect every black person to think like me. I think I expect some to think diametrically in opposition to my best interests. What I'm looking at or looking for are those I can work with that have common goals, common assessments, common ideas of what is to be and what's necessary. Those are the people I can work with. I love all my people. Some of my people don't love me. And I, I understand that. I understand that there are a lot, there's a lot of psychology that goes along with that. I'm good with that. Here's the thing. I really and truly want us to understand is that we have got to do a better job of understanding the nuances of politics, understanding the nuances of cultural existence and so much more. It's nothing easy about uh, it's nothing easy about that, excuse me, I'm easing around here. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, it's nothing easy about uh, the, the coexistence of a people in a land that does not recognize them in completion. That is some challenges. There are some challenges, excuse me. Uh, to existing in a world in which you are consistently marginalized and ignored. There is a common uh, issue with not understanding your place, your position, and how to operate and how to move. Here's what I can tell you. Our answers, our solutions, I've talked about this for years, for decades. I've written about it for decades. I have been uh, as much of a catalyst as I could possibly be in presenting the truth psychologically, sociologically, historically, academically, um, and in so many different ways to explain to us. Our strength isn't in uh, politics. In order to function fluidly through politics, you have to have an economic base. 
You have to have something on which you can stand that has the ability to, to leverage something. When you make up 13 to 14% of the population, you don't have the leverage because if, if, if all 13% were voters and we're not, and all, thir all of that 13% voted for a particular candidate, and we, go, we come close at 90%, that still doesn't come close to the larger majority or a larger minority group like Latinos, which is where you're getting a great deal of the battle and, and holding together the reason why Trump is with, with I mean, Trump is withstanding this push by Biden, at least at this point, and it's give or take either way, depending on how you want to read it. And that's the other thing people are getting so upset about. Right now, you can read it a bunch of different ways, and everybody would actually be writing and reading, reading it that way. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there are some things that play out that you have to really truly understand political science to understand how this ends out. If there's not a clear winner today, or tomorrow, whenever they finish counting all these votes that should have already been counted. We're not going to get into that. Uh, Mail-in votes should have already been counted. Um, there's going to be a, that's going to likely be a challenge one way or another. If it comes down to the Supreme Court's deciding this because it's challenged, uh, because there are some questions, uh, we have an extremely... Uh, conservative Supreme Court, which favors Donald Trump heavily. And so there's your answer. If there's not a decisive way to get to this, and it's so close right now, I don't see uh, decisive in it. But uh, at this point with me, like I said yesterday, my state of mind, my course of action, the direction I'm headed in does not vary or alter one way or another depending on who this who wins this election. And the thing is, I have enough love for my people that they don't have to think the way I think. If I was if I was banking and weighing heavily uh, my decisions on what uh, on other people believing and thinking the way that I think, I'd have dropped this thing a long time ago. Uh, my thing is to give what I have, to teach what I have, uh, to visit the psychology of our existence in this world through an Afrocentric lens, uh, to stand on the shoulders of the Naeem Magbars, Amos Wilsons, Francis Cress Welsings, uh, that touched on it, uh, to go back further and look at uh, Brother Franz Fanon and look at what was taught in, uh, on, 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 on the idea of the impact of colonialism and to look at how it impacted the black psyche uh, and, and, and to see what that means for us to visit and, and, and examine uh, multi-generational trauma and what it looks like, how it's impacting us in our thought processes. A great deal of what we're dealing with is in, in, embedded in the psychology of our experiences here in America. And I've given everything I got. If I was waiting on somebody uh, and, and everybody to agree with me, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I told you guys a long time ago, I don't do this for likes. I don't do this for shares. I don't do this for big ups and pats on the back. Uh, those are short lived and they have no longevity and no intrinsic value. I appreciate those who give me uh, big ups. I appreciate those who take the time to share it. I appreciate those who send their love and well wishes, but I do this because it's my passion. I do this because I'm building and leaving a legacy. I want the world to know I came, I saw, I fought, I conquered. Uh, whatever else happens after that, I'm going to do what my grandmother taught me when I used to worry about as a nine. What my grandmother used to say and when I was nine years old and worried about what the kids at the school were saying to me was, son, stop trying to convince people of who you are and let, and let the life that you live speak for you. Don't spend your life trying to convince people of who you are. People are going to be and think and, 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 and assess you in their own way. 
at the end of the day, if you make up in your mind that you're gonna let your life speak for you, you're gonna have some ups and some downs. You're gonna have some choices and some decisions that you've made that you're not really truly proud of. But if you focus and you give it all that you have and you live your life on full every day, that at the end of this life, you will be able to let the life that you live speak for you. And throughout your life, you will be able to let the life that you live speak for you. What that means in short is that I don't have to run around trying to get people to like me. I don't have to run around trying to validate myself through people agreeing with me. I stand firm in what I, uh, what, what in, in my convictions, and I back my convictions with evidence, and then I'm willing to stand on it. But I'm also, if you guys know me, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to be wrong. I'm willing not to, to acknowledge I don't know it all. I'm not here to be a know-it-all. I'm not here to be the smartest person in the room. I'm here to be a contributor. And when people come to me, no matter what their background, no matter what their educational level, no matter what, when they speak to me with respect and they share, and they share their uh, uh, when they share their opinions and their insight, I take it because it may be something there. I could be off. I could be misjudging. I could have information that I haven't been privy to as I make these decisions. And so all of that is great. So with that being said, let's think about how we are handling each other in this time. Because at the end of the day, regardless of who ends up in that office, they're not our friend. They're not our friend. And the whole idea of the lesser of two evils is absolutely ridiculous. Evil is evil. Someone screwing you is someone screwing you. How they do it and how they talk to you in the process is irrelevant. We need people who are going to literally work in our interests and prove to us through their actions that they have our best interests at heart. And we have to find those people and it will not be in any manner, shape, form, or fashion done by religiously voting for someone who hasn't brought us nothing to the table, period. Um, on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now, I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Jay, people talk Real about talk, it, all of the elements.